Hello, my name is Tiago. In this video, I'd like to discuss with you digital filters in power electronics. And this topic is quite broad, so uh, in this video, my intention is just to give you a short overview of this topic and try to guide you to some books and papers that you can later read for more details. Okay, so let's go. Uh, first of all, please subscribe to my channel. This will help me a lot and like this video. Very often I will post here some videos about power electronics, but, but again, my intention is not to give you a deep class, but just an overview and, and guide you to look for other materials, because of course these topics are quite broad and would demand me tens of hours to teach you these kind of concepts. Okay, well, so let's go. I will show you here some slides and later I'll go to the MATLAB and try to show you some behavior of digital filters. Okay, so digital filters in power electronics. Here is an overview of what we are going to discuss. I'm, I draw here some simplified diagrams just to summarize where digital filter is applied. And you can see here a power converter, it may be anyone, a DC, DC, AC, a CDC, a multi-level converter, bus, book, a grid connector, half bridge, anyone. Just is just to give you an idea how the digital filter will be later applied in these blocks. Okay. So you have here a power electronics converter. You also have passive filters for each kind of converters you are using. And then they are connected in such a way. You have also sources. It may be DC sources or AC sources. Usually you have also DC sources connected to this point when you have a DC-AC converter. And this is the basic structure of any kind of power electronic application. A power converter made by transistors, diodes. You have passive components made by inductors, capacitors. And you also have sources that you, you are processing the energy. And now you have sensors. You are measuring some variables in this system to be later transferred to the digital system where the digital filters will be applied. I draw here some sensors for current sensor and voltage sensor, but also this is a general overview. It may be any other variable that you are measuring like the speed, torque, and even temperature. Okay. After you are using some sensor along your system, you, you transfer the signal to the a digital environment where you have a digital controller and where you apply digital filters. Of course, you need also a conditional circuit because you are measuring some variables. Usually they are in AC, they are alternate, and the input of any processor has just supports only positive values. So you need to make a kind of circuit conditioning in order to adjust the offset to allow that alternate Voltages may appear as positive only, and you also need to adjust sometimes the amplitude because usually you have here sensor gain, and then this may not be in the range of the analog inputs of the processor. This is quite normal. Have also a conditional circuit made by analog electronics like uh, operation amplifier, capacitor, resistors, and so on. Okay, and later these res these measures that these signals that you are measuring goes to the digital environment. And also I have here just a simplified diagram to illustrate you what is a digital environment. You have here an ADC converter, analog to digital converter. Probably this ADC has already a zero order holder, which makes the, your signal a continuous signal to be digital, or make your a continuous time signal to be discrete. You also have a, here a reference for any kind of variables you are controlling. You have here a digital controller and probably the modulation is PWM which is doing one of the most classical modulation. But you have also need you also may have other kind of modulation like the staircase, in one space vector. Here is just a concept that where digital filters will be later applied. Power converters, power passive filters, sources, sensors, measuring variables along the system. A circuit conditional circuit just to adjust offset and amplitude. You may also have a, a, a analog filter here in order to clean the signal, but later this signal comes to the input, the analog input of your processor. And of course, if you are talking about digital filters, 
they will appear here inside your digital environment. I, I place it here just for convenience, one digital filter right here. And I place one here really close to this controller because later I'll show you that actually a digital controller is behaves as a filter. I mean, a digital controller is actually a digital filter as I will show you later, okay? In this scenario here, what do you can have as digital filter in this path? Like a digital pass, uh, low pass filter, you may have a bench stop filter, depend on, of course, on your application. You may have a resonant filter here just to extract some components. And later you have here the digital controller, which is again actually is a digital filter. Okay. You may have here a moving average filter whatsoever. The point is that digital filter, of course, obviously will go into inside the digital environment which is your probably your digital signal controller or digital signal processor when we talk about digital filters the most classical are these two ones here the finite impulse response filter which is this one and the infinite impulse response filter which is this one let's i won't get into deeply details about these filters this actually you can check later in this book this is actually one of the best book best books about digital signal processor and i'll just give you some features here how this kind of structures can be applied in power electronics conference this is actually a review most of you may be familiar with these structures but let's discuss a little bit and i'll show you later how these features can be applied in analog in power electronics application. Beginning here with the finite impulse response filter, you see here that the structure is quite easy. It is made only by delay. This is a unit delay. You have here multiplications and some constants here and a sum. The implementation of this filter is actually quite easy and simple because the blocks you are using here are familiar, are commonly used blocks. Unit delay, multiplication, sum, then you have the output. And this finite impulse response filter is this, what you need to know here. These delays here is very important and also these numbers here. These numbers are usually constant and you can call this number as coefficients. So if your filter has an amount of delay units and a lot of coefficients. This, in this particular case, you have here four coefficients and three unit delays. This means that this filter is a third order filter. Okay. If you look to the impulse infinite impulse response filter, it is quite similar. If you see that this structure is rewritten here, but in a different fashion, but you also have here another part of the filter. You, all, you still have delays, a lot of delays, unit delays, and you have still coefficients, but now they are separate in this way here. And this part of the filter is called the feed-forward coefficients, the feed-forward part, and this part here is called the feedback part. Some features that must be highlighted here. Okay, so two important things that you need to know about these two kind of filters. They have delays, and they have coefficients, which usually are constants. And this could be as large as you want. You can include here a lot of delay. The structure is quite easily expensable. You have here more coefficients. And in the similar way, you can expand the number of delays and coefficients down here and down here that you have a higher order filter. But the points that must be highlighted here are the following. Look at this first, the finite impulse response and the reason why this, this filter has this name. If you apply here a, an input signal, a discrete signal, which is a sequence of number, you can usually compute the output. Okay, You just need to have the current input, the previous value, the previous from the previous, and the previous from the previous from the previous, and so on. Each one of these values here, which belongs to the Input signal is multiplied by a constant, later the sum, and then the, you compute the output. This is the computation of the output of this filter in 
time domain, in discrete time domain. Having the input, having the previous input, the previous from the previous, you can usually compute the output of this filter. But suppose now that you are applying here an impulse, unitary unit impulse of as an input signal of this filter here. You can see here that the impulse has zeros for a long time, has a value equal to one at a specific point, and later it has zero. The message here is the following. If you take this signal and just apply a zero, a zero value, sooner or later this will go to zero because this makes uses, make uses of only the input signal. If you apply zero here, sooner or later the previous is zero, the previous from the previous is zero, and later you have the zero. It means that if you apply an impulse at the input, the, the response you will, be, will have finite value, you will have finite time. Sooner or later it will become zero. This is the reason why this filter is called finite impulse response, because if you apply a zero at here, this will be later multiplied, multiplied by zero, and then you reach a zero output. On the other hand, this is called infinite impulse response because if you are apply here uh, uh, an impulse, you may not have zero after a long time. And this is one of the biggest difference in these two structures. This one, if you see this block diagram, it uses only the input to compute the output. For computing any time the output, you just need to know the input. You don't, you, do, you don't need to know the previous output or a past output. You just need to know the input and some old versions of this input. And this is quite different. To compute the output, you need to know the previous output, the previous from the previous, and so on. And this makes this filter to be called infinite impulse response, because if you apply a zero at the input, and make this zero for a long time, you cannot assure that the output will be zero after a long time because this is kind of a feed forward path. It may be here in an infinity loop and make not never to be zero. And this is the reason for this kind of filter to be called infinite impulse response. Apply zero here, you are not sure that later after some time this will be zero because the current output depends on the previous output and the previous and the previous and so on okay this so we have also to lead us to another conclusion that this future here is, is always stable to compute the output you just need the input this is always stable on the other hand this may be unstable because even if you remove the the input the output may be here in an infinity loop making the system unstable okay this is naturally stable, and this may not be stable depending on, of course, the application. And this is something that you need to care about when you are employing these kind of filters. This may lead you to the instability of the system. Okay, but the message here, the message at this point I'd like to discuss with you is this. These filters are defined in this, this fashion. They have coefficients, which are constant, and they have delays, and you can expand this for a long time. So we have here delays and delays from this point of view here. Taking a special care about this one, in this next question shows that this is the transfer functions for the infinite impulse response. If you have here, the, the message here is that the coefficients of this part here appears in the numerator, while the coefficients from this part here appears in the denominator. Later we'll be back on that slide. But let's go to the MATLAB now and I'd like to show you how these filters behave and later let's try to involve these filters in Power Electronics application. Okay, again, the message at this point is you have coefficients and of course a lot of delays units. Let's take a special care about this here because it's simplicity and later add some of this. Let's see some of the other one. Going here to the MATLAB environment if you have here, where is here? If you have here this filter, you can usually compute the frequency response of this filter. If you are talking about two domains, the time domain, the discrete time domain, and the frequency domain, for time domain, it is easy to compute the output. But let's check 
take a careful look at the frequency response of this filter and see how it behaves. And I'll show you later how this can be applied to power electronics. Okay. In MATLAB environment, you can usually type here a code for plotting the frequency response. Let's give you some numbers here. This is the sampling frequency. It's a digital filter. It needs to have a sampling frequency. How you type here some coefficients? What I'm typing here is this. I will take this number, this number, this number, and write as a vector in MATLAB. I will just choose some values here randomly just to show you how it behaves. So, of course, it depends on the order of the filter, but just to give you an idea what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is I'm copying the filter I suppose that I, I existed. I'm just copying this value, this value, in this order to this MATLAB script here. And the denominator is 1 because in this case I don't have the feed forward of the output, so it is 1. Okay. This is suppose how you write the numerator coefficients and the numerator coefficients of a filter. If I run this code, they are right here. Actually, I'm pushing here, run in advance. I can type this command here to plot, to compute first frequency z, numerator, denominator, and the frequency. Okay, this command here computes the frequency response. I will create a figure and then I will plot. Let's see what's the command here. I have right here this one. I'll talk about that later. Let's see what we have. This is what we have. Don't don't care about its shape. Don't try to understand this right now. I would just like to tell you that if I modify the coefficients, of course, I will modify the frequency response. Okay. So we have here a filter, a finite input response filter with some coefficients. They are typed right here, and then I have this frequency response. What I want to show you at this point, if I modified these coefficients here. Let's modify randomly here, just to show you, obviously, that the frequency response is going to change. If I compute again the same commands, you clearly see here is what happens. Let's repeat again. So I have two. Let's close. Let's create a figure. Let me plot first this and then this. This is our original filter. If I modify it, let's try this and this. Run this script again. Let's plot this again and plot this again. Now I hope I succeed. Well, what's happening here? What's I mean going wrong here? Do not understand. Let's see. No. I see. Okay, let's carry on with this video. I had to stop here to remember uh, some comments here in MATLAB but that I suddenly forgot. Here again, let's start again with this discussion. I have here the frequency, the sampling frequency, the coefficients from the numerator of a Infinity Impulse Response Filter, which is these numbers here, and I can tell, I can show you one interesting feature here. If I run this script, then if I plot, if I first compute the frequency response of this digital filter, then I create a figure, then I plot this value. What I was forgetting here is to push hold. Here, here I have the frequency response of such a filter. Don't worry about now to understand this behavior. This I can guide you for a book later to understand. What I want to show you here, if I modify some coefficients, notice that the filter is the same. I'm not changing the order of the filter, I'm just changing some numbers at this point here. 
if I change these numbers and compute this again, then we can clearly see here that we have a different shape because just because I modified some coefficients of the future. What, what's the conclusion of, at this point? What's the message at this point? The future is the same. The structure, I mean, you have the same number of delays, but I just modified the first coefficient and the last. And you can see here that it changes the frequency response. The message is here. If I change the coefficients, I change how the future behaves. You see here that for this second future has a low amplitude than this and so on. And this is the first message I'd like to tell you because we'll be using these digital filters in power electronics. The, the way, the manner the future behaves depends on, of course, these coefficients here and also on the number of delays you have. Let's carry on a little bit about this finite post response. I have here some other values that I'd like to show you here. Just a moment. Okay. Okay, let's go here. Let's try to what's going on here. Okay. Here I have other I can now comment this. I have here other future, but this is quite larger. I have here 32 coefficients, but the structure is actually the same. Let's first of all make a clear all, CLC. Run this again. I will compute again this and plot this. Just to show you that this is, uh, let's make a clear all. Close all, CLC. And then we can begin again. Now I have here a coefficients for a higher order future. Let's plot the frequency response of this future to show you that this is clearly a low pass future. If you have an input on this future with having these coefficients, you see that for frequencies up to this one, all frequencies are multiplied by 1, which passes, and then later they are multiplied by 0. It means that for low frequencies, it, it is allowed to pass to the output, while the high frequencies are blocked. This actually is a low pass filter. But what I want to tell you right now is that I have here the coefficients. They also have, if I type here, there are 32 coefficients. Okay, the future is quite a higher order, but we can see here the frequency response is that. But again, the message I want to tell you now that if I modify, if I modify the coefficients of the future, I can reshape the frequency response. I can reshape how the, the let's see, okay, I can reshape how the future behaves. If I run this again, let me push a hold here. Just modifying the coefficients, I will multiply all coefficients by this sequence here. And if I plot now using high pass filter and plot this again, you can see here a high pass behavior, just changing the coefficients of the digital filters. You can clearly see here that modifying now my coefficients are made by this value here. Okay, the message is again if you if you keep the structure as it is but just modifying the coefficients you can have different frequency responses. You can have a low pass filter or a high pass filter just modifying this coefficient. This is also valid for this kind of filters. But the message, and, and this is what I try to now lead to the Polytronics application, because if you can change the frequency response just modifying these numbers, you can now design your, your filters to behave as you want. You can design to your filters to behave as a PI controller, as a lead lag controller, and so on, as a resonant controller. And this is the message I'd like to show in this video. Uh, power electronics applications 
that uses use digital filters may be employed by these structures, but you need to compute correctly the values of these coefficients. Actually, in order to design a filter, the, the two uh, results that you may achieve is the number of delays that you need to use and also the coefficients. In this book here, you have a good approach how to design uh, digital filters based on some previous requirements. And this is valid for power electronics. So you can em employ some filters just by designing correctly the coefficients of each filter from this structure or this. And of course, each depending on what you want, it, 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 it will be have a procedure for that. I'll show you here more specific applications for power electronics. This is a general background. So the message is that if you change the coefficients of the filter, you change its behavior. Let's make a clear out just to tell to show you that I can, for instance, this is a script for a digital resonant controller. Let's compute this. I just pushed this. Where it is? I'm using the shortcut for pushing this button. But you can clearly see here that I have a different frequency response for this filter. And if you see here, I have the coefficients for B and A. I have this is a third order, second order filter. I have here the coefficients that I will be in, employ right here for B and for A. This is a script. This is actually, if you see the behavior, is actually this is a resonant filter. And you can also have double frequency resonant. More details about that is in this filter here. In this paper I have published in 2008, which is a digital proportional resonant controller, and I have also a video describing this material very well. But the point is, if you take a look here, where it is, this is a transfer function of a resonant controller that may be used in power electronics application. If you, hear, if you see here the transfer function, it is the same transfer function I'm having here for this structure here. And the message is, for the same filter I can make a low pass filter, a high pass filter, I can make also a resonant filter where will be used in a proportional resonant controller. You can also have double frequency and so on, okay? This is actually very simple and the point is again I'm just modifying these coefficients. This filter may be initially designed as a low pass filter. If I design properly what I want, I can modify the same structure, the, the, just the coefficients of the same structures to work as a resonant Future. Another example is in this paper here I have presented in a conference in the beginning of this year here, 2020. This is a StatCon with digital current controller. If you go down, maybe you can later take a careful look at this paper, but I'd like to, I'd like to show you here that I have here a, a current controller, which is digital, a digital current controller, and again, this is actually is a digital filter. If you go down here, you see that the definition of the filter is actually a transfer function that may be employed with this structure here. Okay, This structure is a digital filter. It's working as a current controller. And as a result, we can say that the current controller is a digital filter in power electronics application. And the point here is how to compute the coefficients and again, each, each application has its tuning procedure for that coefficients. You can see here that how is the frequency response for my controller for magnitude and phase and also a short compared with its analog version. But the point is that I'm employing here a current controller which is a integral single lead controller. It makes some advancing phase using actually a digital filter and this is what the most important information I'd like to tell you in this video. I'm using here, where it is it's here? A digital filters that may be employed for low pass, stop band filters, high pass. I'm using also as a integral lead controller. I can use PI controllers and other linear controllers in digital domain. Just to give you one more example, 
Here I have another paper, which is uh, Output Voltage Control. This is a paper I published in Power Trunks Transaction. And you see here that that is I'm controlling the voltage. And if you see later, you can check again later this paper more carefully. But you have here the frequency response for the digital future I'm designing. And you see here the results that the output variable is following the reference without state state error. And again, this is a voltage controller employed by a structure like this one. Just the coefficients change. Okay, so I can I can tell you considering this paper here, which is an integral lead controller. This one, which is a proportional resonant controller, and this one, which is a voltage controller for a multi-level inverter, they have the same structure. What may change is the number of delays and the number of, and the order of the filter and the coefficients. And this is what I'd like to say to tell you in this video. You have digital filters applications in power electronics. They are quite similar. Again, this is for linear controllers. If you have a nonlinear controller like a model predictive controller, may this, this may not be directly employed. You may also need to use some C type code to employ other controllers. But the basic, you can do by that. And these three papers shows that using the same structures that I can use for a low pass filter, I can use for a current controller. For a start cone, I can use the same structure here, just change the coefficients for a proportional resonant controller and also for a voltage controller in a multi-level inverter. And this is one of the most important messages I'd like to tell you. You can do a lot of digital filters in power electronics with these two basic structures here, just computing correctly the coefficients for what you want and having here the order that you really need. And let's see if I have something more. Okay, here. And if you go to my web page, I have here some interesting recommended books, just the cover and the this is I think one of the most one of the best book about digital signal processing. You can check it later. This is just the cover and the this is the third edition. You can take a deeply understand of what I talked about digital filters. This is for a general purpose and also you can also have this book here which you want this one which is also one of the greatest book to describe you digital filters and how to design the digital controllers in, in, in a discrete time domain, in a digital domain. Take a look at these two books, take a look at also at my papers that you can see that I'm using digital filters as controller in three different scenarios just to show you that digital filters in power electronics are quite easy. Of course, for linear controllers, for nonlinear controllers, these structures may also not be sufficient. You need to employ a more sophisticated algorithm. Okay. Thank you for watching this video. The intention here is just to give you an overview. Hope you understood. And please subscribe to my channel and like this video. This will help me a lot. And see you soon.